Thank you, all of you, for this wonderful evening. Um, I'm going to start with a question for Ruben. Um, I remember you telling us about this film when you came with The Square five years ago. But what's on screen is actually different. Like, it's a, a kind of a bigger, more expansive film than what you had described five years ago. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about how, how it took shape. It started with uh, that I met my wife eight years ago, and, and she's a fashion photographer. Uh, so I got very interested in her profession. I, I got interested in stories that she told me about uh, the models, uh, and um, uh, especially the male models, um, and that some of them came from working class, and uh, that uh, beauty, their looks, uh, became a currency that uh, made it possible for them to climb in class society. So for me, uh, the aspect of beauty as a currency and uh, to, to look into that in, in, uh, in the en environment of the fashion world, but then also on the luxury yacht, and then in the end, like uh, taking away all the hierarchies of these two other different worlds and, and start on a flat hierarchy, and rebuilding it with a, with a matriarchy, basically, and, and look at the uh, beauty as a currency. And it was a li little bit the, the idea uh, of this was uh, uh, a, in combination with the, the Me Too movement, because the Me Too movement was happening at the same time as I was writing the script. And I got curious in looking at beauty as a currency from a male perspective. Uh, uh, and uh, like trying to, to bring in uh, aspects of power and hierarchy and beauty as a currency. Since we have uh, two of your actors here, um, I was hoping maybe you can talk a little bit about casting, which is always a very important part of your films. You write, I think, very specific characters, which require, I think, a very particular kind of actor. So, you know, if you can say a little bit about casting and specifically about Dolly and, and Slatko. <clears throat> well, it was, uh, what I always do when we do casting is that we are trying to let the actors uh, take some time and, and add their, uh, their, their thoughts about the characters. And um, uh, it was very fun to try it out with both Dolly and Slatko. I remember with Slatko when we were in Copenhagen uh, and trying out for the, the oligarch. Uh, you did a very likable oligarch. And, and <laughs> in my ideas, I, first I was like a little bit more maybe cliche, a little bit more conventional. I thought the oligarch should be tough and uh, mm -hmm. uh, like you're more of a rough guy. But uh, this very likable uh, oligarch, I felt also this, oh, I, I really like this, uh, this version of the oligarch. And uh, uh, it, uh, when we do the casting, we do long improvisations. And uh, uh, for me, it's important that the, the, the actors feel as safe and secure as possible. And we are we're trying out different things. And uh, so, so very often for me, the casting process is a great um, part of the process to find out things about the characters and the script that you can, that you can use. And the same thing when it came to Dolly, then it was the casting director, uh, Pauline, that went to Manila to meet Dolly. Maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, uh, what happened during that, but it, it was, it, it's always a specific scene that we try out for, for, for the Abigail character, we tried out. Um, the pretzel sticks and the fire that they left, they forgot to watch. And then the boat scene with Carl, and then the, the I can't remember the other one. But it was it was def it was also the, the the scene on the yacht cleaning lady here captain, uh, which was uh, that one that one yeah we we did that exactly and it, it, for me it was a very uh, crucial moment because it was you have to believe in that this person can take command that can take control over over the over the group in on the island and. Uh, uh, Dolly did it in a, in a very, very convincing way. So, but it, you need to give time to the actors in order to bring out what they have and the, the, the specific qualities that is in every, every single human being, I would say, that gives it uh, uh, something that is maybe a little bit unexpected about the part. So, I mean, all of you can talk about this, but how much does the film change based on that process? Um, a lot, yeah. I believe a lot. A lot changed after 
from Ruben right uh, showing us the script up to discussing it with him up to f ac the actual filming Ev a lot of things changed right in a very big way I believe and I think that's that's really important because he took our own um, what we felt was needed by our characters very seriously and he respected that and he allowed us that opportunity to, to explore and to put in what we thought our characters, how they should be port portrayed. So yeah, it was very different. For me, it's, uh, this casting process, uh, when I came in, so I say, wow, it's a different film because uh, uh, it, wa it wasn't for the first moment, it wasn't the tie from uh, some lines from scripts uh, should present something to to Ruben to make uh, my skill like actor, but it was like a, a di dialogue from the beginning about characters. And uh, I remember that uh, when we did these improvisations, Ruben made the uh, changes. Wow, that's good. Yeah, so we changed the uh, so like an actor. Uh, I was in the one process to 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 build the movie together. That this was a big difference. Uh, what how we did. Well, I think it's very important, you know, when you're dealing with a process that is making a feature film, then you work for five years. From the, from the starting point until the, the film is finished, this film took five years. And um, it's a little bit strange that we have this idea about the director and screenwriter, that they sit alone and write, and they are in connection with God, and you know, like they are creating a, a fantastic masterpiece, you know. But uh, my, in my opinion, that, that the, the collaborations that I have with people around me about discussing the project, talking about the project, telling me about the, about the different scenes, then you're using a lot of brains in order to get, like, play ping pong, you know? Like, so I say this, and what do you say then? Ah, mm. And all of a sudden, you can end up in a place that is very unexpected, and you can get ideas that is like, okay, it's impossible to get them by yourself. So it's very, very important to me to, to have this kind of process where you really, really are trying to use the qualities of everybody that is around you in the team. And uh, uh, in my profession as a director, I, I'm the curator of all the ideas that comes up. So I'm like, okay, no, but this idea we keep, this we keep out, and okay, let me take responsibility for the end in, in some way, but uh, everybody has to participate. Yeah. I had a, one question for you about just the logistics of I guess the middle section. I'm curious about shooting the 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 seasickness <laughs> <laughs> sequence. Um, yeah, maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, how the challenges, perhaps. Well, <laughs> one of the challenges was actually that the whole crew got seasick when we were shooting the, uh, this part, because we had built the set on a gimbal, so we could rock the whole set. So like the big dining room and the corridors and the cabins and also the command bridge we, we had built on a set. And uh, we were spending, I don't know, was it two weeks or two and a half weeks on this rocking set? Uh, and, and if you do that eight hours a day, uh, some of us actually got seasick. So we had like the DOP, we had to eat seasick pills. And, uh, uh, but it, not Woody and me, please. No, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I also heard that there was at some point you were, we they weren't allowed to put, wear perfume because it was making people more sick. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it was a, it was an interesting experience because for me I, I want to be controlled, but it was not possible to be in control really. And uh, uh, but I knew uh, already from the beginning we have to push it ten times further than the audience expects. Just ten? <laughs> uh, I, but uh, I, was it more than ten? I, like, uh, <laughs> you have to answer this. I don't know. But um, uh, because when you when you when you see a scene like this in the movie, and I go to the cinema and I see a scene, ah, oh, yeah, they're going to be seasick. You know, then you don't want the audience to be safe. You want to go further and further and further. And in the end, maybe the seasickness means something. It becomes a metaphor of something. You know. Of what? <laughs> I don't. I can't answer that. But it, the idea was, it's going to mean something. But uh, yeah. Okay, I'm getting the sign that we have 
time for only one more question, but I'm going to turn that question over to the audience and let's pick somebody to ask a question. So I just repeat the question is about just the just degrees of sympathy that you feel for the characters and how it shifts throughout the film and maybe you can talk about it in terms of writing it and performing it. I, I, I love this question because I think that um, one thing that I've been dealing with with a lot of my films is to try to step away from the, the individual. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to show the context of our actions. I wanted to step away of the storytelling of the having a good guy and a bad guy. Uh, I wanted to be more of a sociological investigator of the situations. And uh, maybe you understood a little bit that Marx has been uh, an inspiration when it comes to some of the theories <laughs> of the film. Uh, you know, that the great thing about Marx, when, when it came to... <laughs> it was that he was putting in our behavior in a context. So when he wanted to explain our behavior, he showed the context. And if you... Marx was also one of the inventors of sociology. And the beautiful thing with sociology, if you think about it, if you think about the milligram experiment, that we have someone giving electrical shocks to another test person, he makes us understand, ah, in this context, with this setup, this could also happen to me. I also could be the bad guy. And I love that way of trying to give us a knowledge about our behavior. Because I think that we live in a time where we are staring us blind on the individual, we are pointing fingers on the individual, we are saying, shame you, shame you. And then we say, this is the bad, bad behavior, this is the good behavior. But, uh, so, so I'm lacking a little bit of like, uh, uh, showing our behavior coming from a context. And I love the, uh, the idea uh, when I was writing the film that, Okay, let's flip the hierarchies. Let's see what Abigail does with her power position. Will she abuse her power? Will she not abuse her power? Uh, so, so to take away the, the individual aspect of being good or bad and rather point on that it's the context and the situation that creates a behavior. I'm afraid we are actually out of time. Um, we have to wrap it up for tonight. But I want to thank all of you for coming. And Ruben, Dolly, Zlatko, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you thank so you. much.